Hey y'all. Well, I've done it again. As far as too much planting, can't really stand anything to go to waste. Wasn't gonna come on tonight, but I had a pretty good conversation with my dad. And uh, wisdom. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. But no, I uh, planted a couple of uh, flats. I always plant too much. Started seeding some of these 48 count flats, and those are tomatoes. And uh, these are tomatoes, a little bit sparse because I've robbed what I had to get ready for the main plant out in the garden. And there are those red cups again. Having a flashback to last year, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I planted, I've, I've got too much coming up. I guess I'll need them. Gave them away mostly last year. Uh, they'll be getting, they went past the seed leaf and rolling right along. But uh, I guess in our curious and weird times, we might need a little bit of it. Come on, Bo, you're all right. The uh, dogs are worked up here at dark. I was talking to my son on the way home. I say talking, talking at. He doesn't say a whole lot, but it uh, struck me. In his 22 years, he's already going through something that none of us really have ever endured as far as the temporariness of the situation around us. I saw Governor Abbott or read Governor Abbott's headline today and executive orders, appreciating not necessarily including specific things outside of the normal. We're going to have a new normal for a little while, but uh, it's all out of prudence, I suppose. With the sun and the, some of the rain, I was kind of hoping to come home and see some green shoots of corn popping up. Not so much. Some of the seeds laid on the ground have some shoots coming out of them, but I reckon by the weekend we'll see some. Got a little smarter this year. and the, All the peas at once, maybe stagger it for the crop. And uh, maybe Jordan won't look at me so crazy when I tell him we got to pick peas every evening. We will, but maybe not so many of them. But anyway, thought I was smart. And I guess sometimes we kind of get reset in what we think is a bunch of faith. But uh, I guess it was an oversight more than anything. I'm not really thinking. Last year when Mom passed, the garden uh, room and bridge rock and we harvested most of it. I did let some of it go to waste just out of sheer uh, disgust and despair. Y'all know how that goes. She thumped me on the head. I guess I got a head thumping coming at some point when we meet again for letting some of it go to waste. But uh, one thing I did do there toward the end, the last picking was dried out. It was late July and peas weren't any fit to eat. But I went ahead and harvested the dry pods and just kind of shelled them and threw them in a bucket in the front room there. Didn't pay no attention to them. Didn't put them in the freezer like you're supposed to. Just left them there. Well, I bought a couple of pounds of cream crowders to plant <clears throat> this year. Got home and I'm like, wait a minute. I started the germination test on these silly things on Sunday that I had. Not expecting much. I opened the Ziploc bag. I had the purple holes and the zipper creams in. And our our seeds at the store, they're pretty and pink and got a little inoculant on them or root stimulator, I guess, coated. They're tested at 85, 90%. They're guaranteed to come up according to the seed company. So I was all happy and ready to plant them seeds. But I thought I'd check my Ziploc bag, not expecting much. Opened it up and 10 seeds were in there and all 10 were sprouted, 100% germination, just sitting out there on the, in a bucket, open air for about eight months. <laughs> so, shows what I know, I guess I'll have to take those seeds back for a credit, because I got homegrown seeds here that I know will produce. So that was pretty cool. Funny about a seed, it'll sit there in that bucket and you can look at it and it won't do anything, but you put a little water, a little moisture, a little humidity, a little heat, and boom, it knows what to do. Make a pea plant, which in turn makes peas, which gives us sustenance. But I staggered the crops this year. Maybe uh, maybe Jordan won't give up on me on picking these peas. 
may have to have uh, some help this year. But I'm thinking a little bit about it and talking to Dad, debriefing about the day's events and just catching up on things. So blessed to be able to still talk with him. Don't do it enough, but I did tonight. And uh, we was navigating through some different opinions and thoughts. And he's so pragmatic and <clears throat> seen more than I have. And uh, man, he 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 laid one on me. I just wow, never thought about that. When it comes to uh, kind of quarantining ourselves or maybe staying away from a few things for now, it's going to be bad. Yeah, the economy's going to take a dive or a hit or whatever you want to say. But uh, out of prudence and trust in God, and boy, he's got it. He's got faith. But he said, son, I'll tell you something. Acts 28, Paul was on trial for being basically a Christian for lack of a better charge. And he didn't want to get on that ship as a prisoner. He told those old boys not to sail out because it was bad times. He needed to go to Rome to stand trial. They got on it anyway, took off, ended up on the island of Malta, shipwrecked, trying to figure it out. Well, he did what he needed to do, and he gathered up some sticks to make a fire to keep everybody warm, maybe make a little food. And a big old snake was in the middle of them sticks and bit him. Now, this wasn't your normal chicken snake. This was a viper. Enough venom to kill a man dead in minutes. And it got all a pall. But the Lord healed him immediately. And he didn't suffer any harm from it. it amazed the people. But Dad offered up a situation and thinking about faith and going to church and in the midst of this and gathering with those that are of like faith. <laughs> I'm still kind of mind blown on this. He's right. Paul didn't know that old snake was in that pile of sticks. God gave us wisdom. And had he known it, he wouldn't have picked up that pile of sticks without handling that old snake first. But God protected him because he didn't know no better. We know better, folks. We don't know it all. We don't have all the answers. It could be a big conspiracy. Whatever. It's not a test of our faith. It's a test of prudence and social responsibility and to be the light. So, thanks, Dad, for that. You know, I, I've jeered at it, too. You know, as you can't shake hands with those that they're used to and you're pretty sure they ain't got it, but... Uh, why not have some wisdom? God gave us that. Let's be a little smart about it. Support what you can support. We still got to live our lives. We still got to watch tornado warnings. Still have other health issues to tend to and people that are hurting. Poor daughter. And up in North or South Carolina, she works in the hospitality industry. And if y'all have been reading the news, that's going to suffer. And she's been blessed to save her job. But she texted me this evening and <laughs> all she was concerned about was that everyone at work had been laid off. Not her, but all the real workers to get the job done, to change the sheets, to take care of the daily flow of things. She wasn't worried about her, even though she took a pay cut. She said they have nothing to us. No, thank you, baby, for that. Love that girl, love my kids. They've got such a big heart. Uh, if I give them nothing else, I hope it's that. A little empathy, a big part. But we know all will be well. She's not despondent about it, but she's reflective of it. And I appreciate that. I'm both. I was walking in them woods last night. I got to tell one of them myself. And Bo stayed in the pasture. I'd wish she'd come with me because there's coyotes back there every evening. And they're howling close enough. I know they're back there. I got tickled because back there just reflecting, meditating, and pretty cool. Get away from the noise and the business of it. But I got to think, I'm like, man, it's about this time. It's dark. I'm going to be in the headlines tomorrow, not with coronavirus, but local farmer gets mauled by a coyote taking a picture of an oak tree. <laughs> kind of got my hair stood up on the back of my neck for a minute. And, oh, well. God protects the fools too, right?
if you want to call it that. <laughs> but all was well tonight. Again, didn't expect to do this, but uh, let's think about that. Doesn't, doesn't demean our faith to be smart. It's not persecution. Mm. I can go down a whole other road with that. Let's just be smart. God gave us wisdom for it. Carry on with our lives and keep walking. Trust him. We'll use the wisdom he put in your head to not make that something to just stand on to show your ignorance. Did I say that? Oh, probably shouldn't. <laughs> hey, let me do a quick roll call. We'll get off of here and call the night. It's about to get dark on me. Lights are popping on everywhere. This old camera doesn't look like it's that dark, but it is. Let me see here. All right. There's oh, me and my buddy Ray Lucas. How are you, buddy? Uh, good to see you. Thanks for checking in. Hope all is well out your way. Uh, Dorothy Dean. Yeah, I have been busy. I'm going to be sticking tomato plants out by the road after I can't get... I think I've got room for about 200 of them, and that was about 150. I got ready to go with another as many behind. Last year, I set them up on the table. And nobody touched them. I think this year it'll go a little different. <laughs> but I'll be glad to give them. Let's see. Hi from Lewis. Oh, hang on. Hi from Lewis Smith, Lake Alabama. All right. Let's see. There's Charlotte Taylor checking in. Good old tomatoes. Maria saying howdy. Still on lockdown in California. Well, be well. <laughs> Donna's checking in. There's uh, Margaret. Good evening from San Antonio. Cindy saying howdy. There's uh, Donna Wallace from Anna, Texas. Betty Swain from Central Mississippi. Looks like uh, Kathy's down in Bernie. Good to see you, ma'am. Blessings to you. Uh, safe and healthy here. Yes, ma'am. As far as we know, but we don't know a lot, do we? Well, we've got to trust something a little bigger. That old pecan tree, I'm waiting on it to bud out, so I know for a fact that the frost has passed, but I'm pretty sure it has. We'll, we'll say it has anyway. I hope it has. I'm going to have to have a lot of plastic to cover up all them plants if we get a late Easter snap. I think that's going to be just a little mist. It'll probably dip down in the 40s. But anyway, I'm getting off topic here. There's uh, Michael Cooper. Good evening from Ker Kerrville. All right. Uh, there's Deborah checking in. How are you, ma'am? Connie's saying hi from Caldwell. Haven't been able to, to recently. Glad to see you still. I still am along the way. Yes, ma'am. My Aunt Sharon out in Florida. Panhandle. Yes, ma'am. We're being safe. Uh, love y'all and praying for you as well. Let's see, Mr. Uh, Troy Myers checking in. Prayers for my pregnant nurse in isolation after being exposed. Goodness gracious. Well, uh, I, yep, that's, that's a concern. Mr. Gene's checking in. And let's see. Oh, niece, not nurse. Okay, got you. So uh, Janet's checking in from Malakoff. Know where that's at. Pam says her potatoes are popping up. Gardening is keeping my spirits up. That's right. It's good therapy, isn't it? By the way, Pam, we've got plenty of eggs. If you need some, come on by, and uh, we'll be able to fix you up. Vicky's saying howdy from North Carolina. Donna's still still there. And uh, Brian and Deb in Illinois. That's where my oldest son and youngest son is. Got bookends up in Illinois right now. My granddaughter. And uh, West Tennessee checking in. There's... Uh, Ronnie from El Campo. All right, it's dark. I'm going to end up stepping on one of them old slew foots if I'm not. I'm still checking that old chicken house, ain't a bow. Yeah. Say hi. There we go. There, there's your selfie. How about that? You like looking at yourself? Hmm? He's going to be out there in the pasture, posted up, waiting on the coyotes here in a minute. <laughs> still tickles me. That'd be a fool to come up here close to that chicken house. Mm hmm. He'll tackle a coyote, but he won't eat a chicken. I guess that's the difference between uh, wisdom, maybe. I'm going to try a little bit of it. Keep the faith. Wisdom and faith. Thank you, Dad, for enlightening me on that. That was a good, good analogy. Hmm. All right. God bless y'all. Be the light. We'll talk with you later.